What is up, everybody, and welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm Jacob Turner, riding solo again on yet another edition of our Daily Drop podcast series. I mean, guys, we've been pumping these things out. AJ's been doing a fantastic job of pumping these out. The grind does not stop even during the offseason over here at TarHillIllustrated.com. And if you want to support that, you can do so. Just say 33 a month. Links in the description below. Come on over and sign up. We've said it a million times on these podcasts over the last five years I've been here. Sign up, $8.33 a month. Price has not changed in nearly 10 years since AJ took over this site. It's it's cheaper than a than a drive through menu meal. Heck, I got a, a, a club sub at Jersey Mike's yesterday. Big fan of Jersey Mike's. If y'all want, if you guys want to sponsor, let us know, please. We'd absolutely love that. Um, shameless plug. And it was even without a tip, eleven dollars. No drink, no chips. I mean, what are we even talking about, first of all? But it's cheaper than a Jersey Mike sub that takes 10 minutes to eat monthly subscription. I get it. It's cheaper than a drop through meal. Come on, sign up, get extra content, access to our premium message boys, access to insider information. You can be a Carolina insider too. Plus it's a way to support the YouTube channel as well. Um, so guys, come on, sign up links in the description below. All right, guys, for those who don't know, last week I did a solo drop talking about what are realistic expectations for the Carolina basketball team next season in the postseason. We're going to do something similar to this on the football side. Now, I know this video is probably going to get about 200 views because for whatever reason, I I understand it in some ways. The viewership when it comes to football versus baseball, um, excuse me, basketball, I got baseball in my mind. Um, It's just night and day. Basketball just does so much better than football. And again, there are pretty easy reasons for that. But I do always kind of find it fascinating how football content just doesn't do nearly as well on YouTube as is basketball stuff does even in the middle of off season, like right now. So we're going to talk about what are real realistic expectations is again, this is my opinion, different than AJ's different than yours, different than Bryant and Kevin on our staff. It, 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 this is just my opinion. What are realistic expectations for Carolina football? Not during the postseason, just during the season next season, what's a realistic record or amount of games that they could potentially win. So before we dive into it, let's look at Carolina's schedule obviously playing 12 games starts with at Minnesota, Charlotte, NC central, both home games, and then followed by James Madison as well uh, to wrap up that three home game stretch after traveling to Minnesota on August 29th for a night game in the season opener. All right. So we'll break this up into segments. Now, what factors do we need to kind of put in there and, and, and kind of think about, before we can kind of maybe make a realistic guess on the amount of games Carolina might win. Realistic expectation for that, I should say. New quarterback. Who's the quarterback going to be? Your guess is as good as mine right now. I have my own opinion on who I think starts game one. I, I, I just I just do. It, it, uh, his, his, uh, his name rhymes with facts, Blompson. It's horrible right there. It's just absolutely horrible right there. I apologize, guys. That's who I think starts in game one. Do I think he finishes the season as the starter? I, not necessarily. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go out on the limb and say I don't know. There's too many question marks right now based on what we saw in spring, based on Jacoby Criswell coming in, competing potentially for that starting spot as well. Connor Harrell didn't necessarily run away with it, obviously. Or d- there's not a huge separation between anybody right now. I don't even think the coaching staff has a clue, at least based on the last time we talked to him and throughout spring on who the starter is going to be. So that's the number one question. Who's the starter going to be? That's a big question to have. The lines of scrimmage. Is the offensive line really going to be improved? I have my doubts about that. Is the defensive line going to be improved? I have my doubts about that. Well, Jake, why do you ask yourself? Well, Jake, why do you have doubts about that? Well, Carolina hasn't really been great on both lines of scrimmage in the Mac Brown 2.0 era. I mean, heck, you could argue that the best line of scrimmage years that they've had was Mac's first year, and half those guys weren't kids he recruited. They were Larry Fedora players. So you lost a lot of guys on the O-line. You've got some talent there, but do we really expect it to be better than last year? And they weren't great last year. I, I find it hard to predict that. I just do. Defensively, I, I, let me say this. I really like the Jeff Collins hire. I really like what I'm hearing about Jeff Collins. I think he has the potential to maybe change this defense into a just average defense, consistently average defense, I should say. Carolina has been average at times on defense, but they've also been just absolutely horrific at times on defense. And that's probably 
I think the bad is obviously outweighed the good on defense over the last, you know, again, Mac Brown 2.0 era, especially under Bateman and, 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 um, and um, why am I blanking on his name? Gene Chizik. Apologies for that. Brain fart. So while I like it on paper, keyword on paper, I'm, I'm going to keep saying what I think. A lot, I've been saying this for years, and I'm going to keep saying what a lot of Carolina fans feel and I think agree with. Until I witness it in a game consistently, I'm going to find it hard to believe that Carolina's going to be I'm not going to sit here and say Carolina is going to be just a much better defense next year. I think they have the tools and the parts to do that. But again, it starts in the trenches. I can't sit here and tell you the D line is going to be better. I can't there. I have zero proof to suggest that zero. I can't sit here and tell you their line is going to be better. I have zero proof to suggest that even what I'm seeing on paper, I can't sit here and say, well, I like this here and I like that there. And I think there'll be much improved because of this. I based on what I've seen from Carolina as a whole, been going to Carolina. I've had seasons for those who don't know, my dad's had season tickets for 15 plus years. I've been going to Carolina games since I was a kid. I have witnessed very, very, very little really, really good defenses at North Carolina. I, I have not seen that with my two eyes in the you know 15. I've been, I'm 28 years old. I've been watching Carolina for 28 years, essentially, since I was a kid. And I've been going to games every home game and some away games as well, as you guys know, for 15 plus years. I, I can't sit here and say Carolina is going to be defensively that much better until I see it with my own two eyes. I can't say that I like what I, I like it on paper, but I'm not going to say that. So again, we're having these same question marks. And as we know, as we've seen over the last few years, the importance of dominating on the line of scrimmage and, and being a consistent force on the line of scrimmage is so important. And we still have question marks about that going into the season. We have question marks about a quarterback. Now we don't have question marks about a running back. Amari Hampton's arguably the best running back in college football. We don't have question marks about some of the talent on defense. Elijah Huzzy, I think, is fantastic. I think Travis Shaw is a potential to be really good. I really like what I've seen out of Power Eccles. Stats back that up. There, there are parts here. But what, based on what we've seen in the last five years, really, what leads us to believe that this defense is going to take a significant jump and that this offense under a brand new quarterback who, no matter who starts, is not going to be more talented than Sam Howell or Drake May. It's just not. And a new look line of scrimmage. Why? What reason do I have to sit here and say, well, the offense would be a lot better too? I, th I think the offense is going to be worse, and I think the defense has the potential to be better. But until I see it, I'm not going to say they are going to be better. So all that has to be factored in. All that has to be factored in. So what are realistic expectations for Carolina in the regular season next year? Minnesota, tough game. I don't have a ton of confidence Carolina goes up and win that because it's a season over, because it's on the road, because it's on a Thursday night, nationally televised game against a decent Minnesota, a good Minnesota program. I don't know necessarily how good the Gophers are going to be this year. They weren't great last year, but it's a program that is always decent. For the most part, always decent and sometimes it's flared up and been pretty good. You should beat Charlotte Central and James Madison. You just should. So I'm going to say Carolina starts three and one there. Loses to Minnesota and then goes back home and wins three in a row. I think they have a battle against JMU. I think George Petaway might have a big game against Carolina. I'm sure he'll be looking to have one. But I think Carolina starts three and one. Okay, let's move, in, move on. At Duke, next game. Followed by Pittsburgh, Georgia Tech at home. Again, winnable games. In the other year, I'd say very winnable games, especially under Drake Mann, Sam Howell. I'd be very confident in picking Carolina to win these. New look Duke team under uh, a new head coach, Manny Diaz. Pittsburgh team that's coming off a really poor year last year, looking to bounce back. And a Georgia Tech team that I've seen some people talking about being maybe one of the sleepers in college football. Now they're going to go win a national title? Absolutely not. But they should be better. At least that's what I'm hearing. I'm not a Georgia Tech expert. But I look at this game and I say, well, two of these are home games. One of them's five minutes down the road in Durham. I think Carolina wins two out of these three. I think they beat Pittsburgh at home and they beat Duke. But there is no chance I'm picking up to beat Georgia Tech. I mean, come on, guys. Look at the record over the last few years against, against Georgia Tech. I mean, just an absolutely abysmal performance in, in Atlanta last year. And again, losing the year before. If Josh Downs just makes a catch that he's made a million times in his sleep, Carolina wins that game. But again, the record against Georgia Tech in the last few years has been absolutely abysmal. So I'm not picking them to beat it, especially when you look at the question marks of this team going in. So that gives Carolina what? Three and one, five and two. 
five and two going into the last five games of the season. This is for me where it gets really tough. Virginia and Charlottesville place. Carolina has used to really struggle, not struggled as much up there, but we all remember what happened in Chapel Hill last year against a just horrible Virginia team. Carolina never recovered from that. Uh, Some people would say it was the beginning of the end last year, losing to Virginia. I say it was the end. That was it. Carolina never recovered. It wasn't the beginning of a, of a downward spiral. And they won a couple games here and lost a couple of tough ones here. No Carolina. they, They were never the same after that. I think Carolina loses in in Charlottesville. I think they lose at Tallahassee after that. And then they welcome a a Wake Forest program that again, coming off a a poor season last year, what are they going to be like? Have been pretty good in recent years. That's a good program. I think Carolina beats Wake Forest and Chapel Hill. So we've got a loss to Minnesota, a loss to Georgia Tech, a loss to Florida State. No, oh, excuse me, a loss to UVA and a loss to Florida State. So that's four losses right there. So that puts Carolina at one, two, three, four, five, six, and four. I think I'm counting that right. We'll count them all up at the end. At Boston College and NC State to wrap up the year. <sighs> that Boston College one's tough. I, I don't know enough about what BC is going to be this year. Struggled mightily in the last few years. On the road. Let me go out on a limb. I think Carolina beats Boston College. And then they welcome state. <sighs> kind of similar to the Georgia Tech one where how can I sit here based on what I've seen over the last few years, especially what I saw last year. And I've talked to the, you guys on camera about this on podcast before. I saw Carolina quit last year. That was the first time I'd seen a Carolina team under Mac Brown quit. We saw him quit under Fedora, but that was the first time under Mac I, I'd seen a team quit. I was on the field for that game doing photos. I was five feet from the action all day, and that team rolled over. That team stopped playing. That team that team stopped competing, and that team stopped trying. Again, you can argue with me, coach, player, fan. You can say no, they didn't. I'm just telling you what was very evident from someone who was watching that, not just the players quit. I think the whole kind of staff, just everybody on that. And me and AJ talked about this in three things after the game. It just felt like the whole kind of team, the whole unity there just wasn't there. It was kind of, what was me a little bit. So I'm, I can't pick Carolina to beat state. I think they can I think they should. I think they have all the motivation in the world to beat them. But I can't sit here and say Carolina's going to beat NC State when we've seen over the last few years. I just there's again, there's no reason to believe that. Two years ago, you got beat by at home against a you know field goal away from kind of winning that game, but you, you get torched by a third, fourth string quarterback who I, I believe is not even with the program anymore. I can't pick them to beat State, not with this roster, not with the question marks here. So then they beat BC, which I'm not 100, not really super confident about. They beat them in Chestnut Hill last road game of the year, and I think they lose to State at home again on November 30th. So let's count these up. Start the season three and one. I think I picked them to beat Duke and beat Pittsburgh. So five and one and then lose to Georgia Tech. So five and two. They're going to I predicted them to lose at Virginia. So five and three lose at Florida State five and four and beat Wake Forest six and four. Beat Boston College seven and four lose to state seven and five. For me. That's my prediction of what I think is a realistic expectation. I shouldn't say that. That's my prediction of what I think will happen. That's my personal prediction. What do I think is a realistic expectation, which I think can be a little bit different. I think eight wins is realistic. I think Carolina has the ability because I'm looking at this schedule too. And it's to me, it's not that. I mean, what's the hardest game on the schedule? Let's be honest at Florida State. They got a new quarterback coming in. They lost some guys last year. I think they'll still be really good, but. They're going to be the team of last year. I don't, I, I, I don't, I find it hard pressed to believe that. I don't think they'd be that good. A lot of, a lot of winnable games on this schedule. But again, when you look at the quarterback question mark, when you look at the O line and D line question mark, the defense is a whole question mark. How good are they going to be under Jeff Collins? There, there's, it's hard for me to sit here and say, oh, I think it's realistic. Carolina wins nine, 10 games. 10 games would be an incredible shout because Carolina hadn't done that in a while. They've gotten close and they should have won 10 games over the past couple of years, but they haven't done it. It's the fact of the matter. So 
you know, even with me saying eight, is eight wins realistic, I think you can make a case for eight wins is realistic based on the schedule. So I'll go with that. I think Carolina finished seven and five. But I think realistically, when you look at the schedule and you break it down, you can make a case that Carolina wins. A realistic ex- expectation is win eight games. But I also on the on the flip side, think you can make a realistic case that, you know, six games could be a realistic expectation when you look at some of these matchups. I mean, JMU is a tricky team coming into Chapel Hill. Seems like it should be a win, but that's not going to be easy, I don't think. I think it'll be similar to what we've seen against App in the past few years. Arguably, they're better or have been over the past couple of years. Wake Forest is a tricky game. I predict them to win. Heck, go always going to Durham's always Duke, especially under a new coach. That's always tricky. They're going to be up for that game, especially with with what's happened against Duke over the past couple of seasons. I think they feel like they should have won a couple of those games. Pittsburgh, what team are they going to be? Maybe they're better than I'm giving them credit for potentially next year. At Boston College, that's a tough game on the road. BC program. I'm not saying they're a great team, but I don't necessarily think Carolina's going to be a great team next year. And then State, I mean, that's a coin toss. I think Carolina can beat State. Maybe they do on senior day. But again, how can I predict it? Just like Georgia Tech, how can I predict that with what we've seen over the past couple of years? So seven and five, I think, but I think realistically eight wins, I think you could make a realistic argument that, okay, when you look at the schedule, when you look at some of the parts here, when you look at the fact that I think the defense should be a little bit better, I, I, we got a really, really, really talented running back. Yeah, I think Carolina has a chance to win eight games. But again, on the flip, I think you can make an easy argument that Carolina could win six and nobody would be shocked. Maybe even less. I think less would be very, very disappointing um, if you're a Carolina fan. But guys, let me know. I'm not trying to be negative on here. I think there's a big difference between negativity and, and being realistic. And I think when you look at the five, you know, kind of max five seasons here so far, you have no choice but to be realistic. The, the expectations have shifted based on what we've seen over the last couple of years with just the collapses towards the end of the year. And again, I'm not trying to take shots at anybody and and talk negatively and just be this negative Nancy about Carolina football program. But I also have to be realistic. And I think that's what I'm doing now. I think realism can be mistaken as negativity. But I think when you break it down and, and take whatever talking to Carolina fans watching this year and you take your Carolina blue tinted glasses off and say, okay, I'm gonna take my fandom out of it. Let me look at this realistically based on what I know, the evidence that we have in the past. What, what do I really think is going to happen? I think eight wins is maybe a little bit of a stretch, but realistic could happen based on the schedule. And again, I'm picking seven and five. I want to hear from you guys get involved on Twitter at Jacob Turner, THI at, at Hill illustrated. And on our message boards as well, if you're signed up, we post every single content item in our premium message boards. You can get involved over there, chat with our awesome community. Um, and uh, yeah, just get involved with that because we do, as always, want to hear from you guys. I've been Jacob Turner, another edition of The Daily Drop. Appreciate y'all watching as always. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe. We're putting out a ton of content. Got a lot of good stuff. We got a, another pod with AJ and David coming out this weekend. Uh, we had one earlier this week as well. So starting to mix it up as well with uh, not just doing single drops. Um, So yeah, showtime this Sunday as well. Be some content from there. So stay tuned for that. A lot of stuff going on even in the middle of June. It just, again, the grind does not stop over here at tarheelillustrated.com. Thanks. We'll see you all next time.